Welcome back to the latest edition of the Jake's Take with Jacob Elliott Share podcast. I'm your host, Jacob Elliott Share, the chief content producer and writer of jakestake.com, a pop culture and entertainment news website. It is episode 105, guys, and I'm very excited to welcome the founder of Model Trainers, and as of this recording, has over 122,000 followers on Instagram, and his work can be seen in Authority Magazine, Pop Sugar, Watch What Happens Live, and Well and Good. So please help me welcome Sean Alexander. Hey, hey, thank you so much for having me. It is a privilege to be here. And it's what an amazing, amazing intro, by the way. <laughs> thank you for that. You're so welcome, Sean. So guys, we want to, I'll give you, got to give a big shout out to a mutual friend of ours, Nick Topple, a previous guest on here. And that's because Nick and Sean work together. And I figured that if I have to have Nick, I got to have Sean. Yeah, man. You know, you got to have a business partner A and business partner B. So you're going to get both sides of the story. Absolutely. So before we get into model trainers, I want to get to your origin story. So when you get interested in fitness and how did that passion evolve into desire to pursue a career in the, in the fitness industry? Huh. Um, so I was always slightly more athletic than academic. I was always a little bit more innate, innately gifted at being active than than being intellectual and so i just put my focus my energy my happiness stemmed around being active i liked riding bikes and playing sports and um i was never very good at any sports i was really small i was really scrawny really short but i just liked being outdoors and around 18 years old i had uh, kind of phased out of a gymnastics career at the end of high school like i wasn't going to be an olympian and it was like okay i'm done and so I started going to the weight room because really I was going to college and school stresses me out. It scares me like for real it does. And I was like, man, I don't gymnastics has been my focal point, you know, for my creative energy, like for my physical energy. And so I started going to the gym because I was like, man, I got to have something to replace that with. And so I only stepped into the gym for the first time ever at 18 and didn't know a single thing. And I just. I just wanted big biceps for the college chicks that I was going to be meeting like a couple months later. Like that was my whole, at that moment, goal, like A to Z. And then it, it snowballs into so much more than that. You know, you start learning um, work ethic and dedication and patience and delayed gratification. And then it's, it's so much more than, than the big biceps. It's like, no, I'm, I'm a dedicated, committed, hardworking individual. I learned a lot about myself through fitness. And so, I'd say it stemmed because I wanted to impress girls. And then, you know, it just becomes like a, a lifestyle and a mindset. And so it's so much more than, than biceps. So that's kind of how I got into it was 18, you know, graduating high school, looking around like, what do I do? Awesome. So who are your role models in the fitness industry and how do they inspire you? <clears throat> um, that's a great question. That's a great question. I actually, I really like that. I, I think that my friends are, are a lot of my role models already. You know, they say, like, practice until your idols become your rivals. Like, in fitness, no one's my rival. I'm not competing against you. It, we're all here, all on the same team. And so I think guys like Nick Topol, like Jonathan Ibrahim, you know, um, Michael Dean, you know, like, these guys are, are my good buddies and my role models because it's like they keep me on my shit. So I, I can't be lazy whenever – you know, to my left and right, I got really hardworking guys and girls surrounding me. So, but, you know, I mean, I think if you're looking for big, big uh, role models in the fitness space, Steve Cook is one of those guys that for me, I looked up to from day one. Um, you know, Chris Bumstead is, is the Mr. Classic Physique Olympia guy. And I like to follow a little bit of bodybuilding. And even though I don't want to look like that, I, I know the work that goes into it. And so it, it's inspiring to see guys like that. Steve has been a very, as we mentioned multiple times on here. Yeah, man. I mean, Steve really is like, and was, he, he won a competition in 2013, like a fitness model search for optimum nutrition. And this was like 2013. Fitness was not online in the same way that it is now. The whole industry has evolved over eight years. So fast, so fast. And he was the first guy. He won this fitness model scout search. He was the face of Optimum Nutrition and Bodybuilding.com. And it was like he was the poster child. You know, he was the guy. So, yeah, man, I, it's no wonder. Everyone knows Steve Cook is is on the list. 
All right, since Nick and you have mentioned Steve, I really hope that I have a chance to interview him. Yeah, man. I mean, that would be awesome. Like, I think he, he would have a lot of valuable insight. I think he would be an interesting character. I totally agree. But we got to get back to you, Sean, because you're the subject of today's episode. Yes, yes. Enough about Steve. Yeah. All right. So what are some of the challenges that you faced throughout your career so far and how do you overcome those obstacles? The most recent and magnificent challenge I faced is I had neck surgery less than a year ago. It was a really invasive process. Uh, I got this big old scar on my neck uh -huh. and um, they went in and, and cut my neck open, removed a disc between my C5 and C6 vertebrae, replaced it with an artificial disc. And then I was in a neck brace and, and I've had to rehab and recover from that. And my neck is still not the same. It's never going to be the same. And so even after nine months of rehab and of intentional effort to, to recover, it's, you know, that, that's definitely a big challenge right there. Um, yeah, so I, I think that's the most recent one. But if you had a question on like, you know, I guess like a mental challenge or some other type, but that one has been super difficult to overcome recently. That, and I'm glad that you're still continuing to persevere and do all of that because I think that neck challenge is also the equivalent of a business challenge. I think it's also equivalent of this is also the same as a mental challenge as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot of everything because me being able to be active is my business and my personality and my sense of self comes from being able to go relieve stress in the gym. So not having that at my disposal was definitely something to overcome you know, in my business in terms of how do I create content and promote uh, model trainers and then mentally and physically, you know, it's, it's tough. All right. Speaking of model trainers, let's hear, let's talk about its origin story. So when did the idea of model trainers first came out? 2017. Um, I was having a conversation with one of my good buddies and we were talking about how just uninspiring and hypocritical it is whenever you see a really out of shape personal trainer at a chain gym. And, and we were both kind of talking like with no direction to this conversation. And it was like, look, man, I'm a fitness model. I work out all the time and I eat healthy and I I'm, we are the guys on the magazines, literally, you know, we're landing magazines and book covers and commercials. Like how are people not wanting personal training sessions from the guys that walk the walk? You know, what's the deal with that? And so we, um, you kind of just being jokesters, like just being goofy. We're like, we, you know, we should be like the model trainers. Like, you know, we should be like the role model signed fitness model kind of little play on words, like the, the role model personal trainer that practice what he or she preaches. And, uh, and I was kind of like, damn, that, that might have something to it. And so I kind of put my feelers out and I started asking around, like what y'all's experiences has been with personal trainers kind of just within my social circle. And they kind of all had at least one or two stories that just, painted personal trainers in a negative light. Cause it's, you, know, you don't want to show up looking to work with a qualified professional and then have them be just as out of shape as you. It's like, that's so dumb. Why are we doing this? And so that's where it came from. And people kind of said that, yeah, I would be interested in training with people that know what they're talking about. You know, I, I want to take advice from people who have accomplished what I'm trying to accomplish, which is, you know, staying, Injury free minus the neck, but car accidents I won't count in terms of injury free in the weight room. It's a little different. It's like, hey, stay injury free, get healthy, you know, have the best body that you've ever had, no matter how old you are. Like, you put the work in, you know, and you take advice from credible sources, really incredible things can happen. And so, whenever people kind of echo their desire to actually work with a team like that, we got notebook and paper, and it was like, okay. Let's start assembling a team. Let's go file my first LLC and let's just see what happens. And then, um, and then it's just kind of organically grown. Like people just identified with that motto of, and that mission of leading by example. And congratulations on model, on model training's fourth anniversary. I believe it's been almost four, four or five years. years. Yeah. Yeah. And I heard, I was listening to one of your previous podcasts and it has, I heard, I believe it's gone international if I'm correct. It's what has gone international. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, no, we, we've, we've trained over in London. We've trained over in France and Italy. I had a client in South Africa and Australia and yeah, it's, it's all over the place. And especially now that what we did is we took all of our in-person services 
Um, got a web designer and an app developer built out a whole online portal and platform to be able to support global outreach. And now we're training, you know, hundreds of clients from around the world and it's capable because just 2021, you know, if you're using technology, you can scale like that. And so we're no longer limited to, to my physical location. Absolutely. And I want to talk to you about what differences between model trainers has with other fitness franchise, online fitness franchises. I've had a lot of guests that have come here and I've been friends with a lot of dear friends like Fit to Fat to Fit, my friend Mike Rosa of Anabolic Aliens, and one of the OGs, Scott Herman. So I'm so what makes you what makes model trainers stand out against their brands? So I think that one of the things that we do that's different is <clears throat> we've got a whole team with different backgrounds, with different expertises, with different opinions and perspectives that we can all go in and bounce information off of each other so that you're not buying a program from the face of a credible source and then getting a program from a VA over in a third world country because you know you're, it's not a delegated process. It's in-house, it's controlled, and it's a whole team of credible superstars that are taking a top-down look at your programming saying, hey, you know, oh, you don't know what to do. I do. And it's no longer one person's limited perspective, but a whole community to really bounce ideas and suggestions off of. And so I think that our community aspect is a little different too, because you really do have men, women, guys that were overweight in the past that are now thin and guys that are, you know, super thin and now muscular. And so it's kind of like different perspectives, different backgrounds kind of gives for a little bit more, um, personality, a little more customization into the programming. All right. Speaking of programming, I would love to learn about how you and your team create those programmings, no matter if it's workouts or nutrition. Yeah. So, oh God, nutrition and workouts, that's two big different topics. So we, we do a couple of things. We offer um, standardized programs and then we offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. We also have corporate um, training, corporate body weight classes. So that, that is on the shelf all by itself, right? That's only corporate clients, but we do have a couple of those. Um, but primarily it's either like created, pre-created courses and programs or customizable one-on-one -on -one coaching. And kind of the difference here is whenever you're buying a program, it's not customized to Jacob specifically. It's not, uh, you know, and anyone who claims to be able to sell a program for less than a hundred dollars and say that it's customized to you, I don't believe that it's customized and qualified advice. You know, yeah, like I could have my seven-year-old sister create a customized program for you, but <laughs> okay, you see where I'm going with that. Customized doesn't mean good. And so what we've done is with our standardized courses, so fat loss for men, muscle gain for men, fat loss and muscle gain and lean and tone for women, you know, a cardio and abs program or a body weight routine. Um, each one of those are standardized programs that we can sell. But what we've done to differentiate and, and make ourselves different in our offer and, and far superior, if I do humbly say so myself, mm -hmm. is whenever you buy one of these programs for less than $100, you're getting access to a, a portal online, similar to an online college course. So you log in, you have chapter modules over on the left-hand side. You'll click in and it says introduction, how to build an ironclad mindset. And then you get a 15 minute video of Nick talking to you with over 90 pages of course content and over four and a half, five hours of video information within the course. So you're really learning how and not just being provided, you know, a, a program. It's like you're learning how to succeed in the long term, not just. I think what I'm trying to say is we're, we're, we're teaching men to fish. We're not just giving you a meal. You're learning lifelong skills here. You're learning the why behind the what, right? The how behind the what. And so I think that's really empowering for people. And then whenever you get through this course, okay, because I know it's like, oh, but I don't want a course. I don't want a PDF. Uh, it automatically, and this is, this is the programming. All of our programs are less than $100, uh, the courses. So, you know, this is a fully integrated 16-week workout program, 90 pages of interactive content for mindset, nutrition, health and wellness, flexibility, supplements, everything under the sun, it auto uploads into our custom mobile app where the following Monday, so if you bought the program on Thursday, the following Monday, it starts for you where you track your progress pictures, body weight, all your measurements, you have access to message your trainer and it'll take you through every workout day after day 
with video examples where you can track your weight. Your, your, like it has rest time timers. So it's like for $69, okay, it's less than $100. I know it's not customized to Jacob, but you have 95%. And if you've got a bum shoulder, you have every tool in your toolkit to be able to work around that intelligibly. And so then we bump our pricing up for the one-on-one -on -one coaching and the one-on-one -on -one coaching is really super involved. You know, I mean, it's like, we're taking into account everything about you 24 seven access to communication with us. You're saying you're being held accountable. You're it is, it's above and beyond. You know, we'll, we'll um, you know, coordinate with a personal assistant or you to even like work with meal planning services to make sure that your nutrition is on autopilot if you're traveling, we'll find gyms for you and set up new routines based on limited equipment. So start program, but like providing some stars and then one-on-one -on -one coaching and providing the rest of the galaxy. Awesome. I definitely think model trainers, I think model trainers is per, I, it sounds like you guys have a great game plan. And I think that you're going to, you guys, I think have a lot of satisfied customers. It sounds like. Yes. Yeah, I, I, you know, and again, humbly so. You know, I just said, yes, we have a great game plan and tons of satisfied customers. You know, look, there's always room to improve, and I'm, I'm hungry to do that every day. So I'm always open to suggestions and criticisms and critiques. But, yeah, I mean, I'm really proud of what we put together right now. And, and you know, just to be able to get more people in and transform more lives and more bodies, like, that's the mission. All right. So I want to change into something fun. Okay. So I so I want to talk to you about your Instagram because you are definitely one of one of one of the influential Instagram people you I I look to and I see a lot of your stuff. So what why did you choose Instagram over 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 something like a Facebook or a TikTok or a Twitter? You know, I I started Instagram like in 2016, 15, no, probably before that. I don't know, 14 maybe. It was just the platform that I chose. I, you know, no particular reason. Facebook just didn't call out to me. Um, by the time TikTok was rolling around, I, I was just very busy with other areas of my life. I, I had a whole separate company and business, occupied a lot of my time. And content creation is tough. It's time consuming. It's, it's, it's time consuming. It's not tough. It's time consuming. And I just didn't have the time to to really excel on multiple platforms at once. And so it was like, I, I have some momentum on Instagram. Let's hunker down, double down, really build the Instagram following. And then, um, and then once, you know, the business is streamlined and I've really got a lot of free time freed up, I would love a videographer and a videographer to be able to, you know, work with me on a daily basis, creating content, you know, every day right now, I just don't have that capability. So Instagram was the one that I know how to do. I feel comfortable with and, and I get the best response on. So. Okay, so speaking of best responses, I've seen a couple of posts featuring you and your friend and fitness model and trainer, Michael Jean Johnson. I think you mentioned him earlier in this conversation. Yeah, and yeah. you were both sit where you're both standing and the pre pandemic watch what happens live set with Andy Cohen. So, how did that gig happen? Oh, oh, watch what happens live? Man, I lived in New York City. Like, that's it. You just meet people and get connected. And then all of a sudden you get a call and they say, Hey, we're going to send a car down to your apartment, pick you up. And we need you to be shirtless on this TV show. And it's like, Holy shit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like whatever. And so I don't even know. It, it's my good buddy, Anthony Mozella is, um, you know, he's kind of like the creative director, casting director for the, the back end production of watch what happens live. And then it's like, you know, you get the call. It's like, yeah, man, I'll show up and take my shirt off. So I think I've done that show probably five, six, seven times, met some really incredible celebrities and it's been a great experience. Yeah. I actually saw that you had photos with Andy, with you two and Andy and with the, and with Fergie. Uh, I got Fergie. We met Tyra Banks, 50 Cent, Gerard Butler, like the cast of a bajillion of the housewives. I don't know any of them, but yeah, I mean, it was like Andy Cohen is, I, I think he's a great guy. Um, you know, and I just, I loved it. It was a great experience. All right. So speaking of reality television, I have a lot of people come onto this podcast. I've gone on three shows such as Survivor, Big Brother, or Net Challenge. Have you thought about competing on any of those shows? Why or why not? 
I have been asked to do so many reality TV shows. Like legitimately, it's just kind of ridiculous. You know, they just slide in your DMs. Hey, I'm a casting producer for X, Y, and Z. Like, could you reach out? And and so the first time I got that, it's like, it's astounding to be like, oh, they want me on TV. It's crazy, right? I'm just a small town kid from Lubbock, Texas. And so even to go to New York and model at all is just like, still kind of unfathomable like wow that is it's just wild like you know you don't ever expect that you know because whenever you're in high school you're just looking around and it's like you're a regular dude so whenever they reach out to you to ask if you're on tv it's like you're honored and it's like yeah i'll take the interviews yes i'll go through so i've just taken on the habit i do a lot of these interviews i think i've interviewed for 15 different tv shows i have no desire to do any of these tv shows um, I'm pretty good at the interview process now. I, I kind of know how to frame the, my responses. I know just how the process works. And so I think there have been two shows that I really went through the whole process, like hoping that I would make it through, but it's never a dating show and it's never a, a drama filled series. I don't like to drink that much. I don't want to go have like sex with women on the first night and have my grandma. It's like, I, I don't want any of that. That's not the, reputation I want to carry with me. And so the shows that I've been interested in have been business shows, kind of kind of like Shark Tank or The Apprentice. And oh, so yeah. I've applied for two of those shows and um and I made it down to like the final 12, you know, 2500, 3000 applicants, and I think in both rounds I made it to the final 15, but I didn't get selected for either one, so Besides, you got you guys would be really good on Shark Tank. I could definitely see that Mr. Wonderful would be very happy. And I can also see, and hopefully Barbara Cockham will give you some of her, would be in before she says I'm out. So funny that you say that. I, um, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I, I can't, I don't know how much I can say about this other show, but it was kind of a woman like that. It wasn't Barbara, but kind of a woman that was kind of looking for a right-hand man to her business. You know, yeah, it was, a. Uh, if that opportunity comes across my doorstep, I'll take it up. In terms of dating, I'll keep my personal life a little personal. For me, I would stick with I would stick with the big brother. However, I know my family would kill me. So I am sticking to talking with them instead of competing. So I yeah. Any any of those shows that make me nervous. Are you the one, Big Brother, The Challenge, you know, Lovers in Paradise, Love Island? Like I've been asked to do all of them. Summer House, like the whole and so it's like no, no. <laughs> I could see you on the challenge. Besides, Paulie and Joss, they are also in the fitness industry as well. That would be a really cool alliance. I just don't think that's my scene. Like, I, you know, like, I don't know that that's my crowd. I like to work out, but that does not mean that my life is gym tan laundry. Totally understandable. Teach their own, teach their own. Yeah, like, so you know, I, I, read, I read books. You know? <laughs> same with me, same with me. <laughs> so let's start wrapping down this and wrapping up this interview. So if you had the opportunity to meet with people who are struggling with their fitness journeys, what advice would you share with them? Oh, God. You're not alone and it's okay. You're doing great. You're doing great. Every, every, every step, every action, no matter how micro it is, if it's, if it's forward and it's building any amount of momentum, you're okay and you're doing great. Just, just keep doing it, right? I, it, it devast no one is against you. That, that's the message. You're doing great and no one is against you. I, I just talked to one of my buddies just recently and he, she, she, yeah, it's one of my buddies and she is, told me a story. Whenever she started going to the gym, um, she was out of shape and she started going with her sister at 6 a.m. because she felt like, oh, if I'm going to the gym, I have to do it at 6 a.m. because that's when gym time is, you know, if you're really going to see results, you know, it's 6 a.m. And she went and she had no clue what she was doing, no, no mentors, no guidance, no support system. And she said that she would spend most of her days crying in the locker room. And it just like, I never experienced that. You know, I, I was too... <laughs> I was too dumb to experience that type of self defeat because I was like, I'm just going, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm just happy to like kind of be an idiot and fumble around. But I, it was like, 
I never worried that I would never see it. You know, it was like, no, I'm just here and I'll just learn. And it was just a different mentality. Whenever I hear people just so devastated that they'll never see results and that it's like, guys, you're okay. You're doing great. No one's against you. Just ask, ask, whether it's online, whether it's your favorite fitness influencer or whether it's just the most fit person at the gym. Like, do you understand how humbling it is for me whenever a 15 year old kid, a 14 year old like boy walks up to me, 18. I had to, I had a 19 year old kid walk up to me three weeks ago. He, he walks up to me, taps me on the, the shoulder, and I take my headphones out. And I used to do this. This is my you know, modus operandi. I would just walk up to the guy that had the biceps that I wanted. And I would just shamelessly interrupt him and say, Hey man, you have the arms that I really want. And I don't know how to do that. What, what do you do? And whenever I was asked that question, it's like, come here, sit down. I'm going to take the next two hours. I want to tell you everything because we all want you to succeed, right? We all want you to succeed. So if anyone ever needs any help, it's like, use me. I, I know a lot of people are really time sensitive. You know, it's like, I, I don't have the capability or you're not paying me. I don't want to offer advice. I genuinely feel that anyone that reaches out to me that I can see a DM and keep a conversation up with, it's like, man, I'll go above and beyond. Like, you know, and then I know they'll go above and beyond and go buy programs from me because I'm providing value on the front end. And, and, you know, I just have a feeling that people are good and that they'll, the universe will pay me back for, for doing that. The universe will definitely pay you back. my friend. So. <laughs> yeah, man, I hope so. I hope so. So, and Jacob, that, that applies like to you. I know you got like a thousand fitness friends, but like, I just want to say it applies to like legitimately every single person. So if you're listening to this, hit us up on the model trainer website, the Instagram, my personal, like, yeah, we're on your team. I'm glad to have you on my team. No, man, we're, we're glad to have you. We're glad to have you as part of the team. All righty. So where can my audience connect with you on ins besides Instagram? Where else can they connect with you? And also where, what can they do to support model trainers? All right. So on Instagram, we'll start there. Uh, the model trainer account is at model underscore trainers. My personal account is at Sean Alexander with two R's S E A N Alexander. -er. Um, and then go to the model trainer website, www.themodeltrainers.com. And you know, at the bottom of that website, you'll be able to see some of the articles that we've written. You'll be able to kind of get in and, and, um, see what we're about and see who we are. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Now, guys, if you miss any of the episodes from Jake Sick with Jacob Elias Show podcast, head to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Spreaker. Just type in Jake's Take with Jacob Elias Show, J A C O B E L Y A C H A R. You'll find incredible conversations, including one with Nick Topple, who I just recorded a couple of weeks ago. So, also, are you on social media? Because I'm on social media too Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Jacob Elisher, J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. Now, to sell, now, 2021 is a huge year because jakes-take.com, the blog that started it all, is turning 10 years old. For more articles, for more interviews with the people who I, such as Nick Topple, Scott Herman, all the, and Mike Rosa, and Drew Manning from Fit to Fat to Fit, and all the- Sean Alexander! She, absolutely, Sean Alexander, too. Head over to jakes-shake.com. Sean, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to talk with me today. I am so happy to have you. Oh, hey, Jacob. It was great to be here. Thank you for talking. Let's stay connected. I look forward to, to talking in the future. All right. You, absolutely, Sean. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much for listening. Until next time, have a great one. Bye. Bye.